A man whose body makes its own alcohol has been cleared of drunk driving charges. A hospital staff asks people who have been bit by snakes, please don't bring the snake to the emergency room. And a principal was caught doing a facial inside the school, bites the teacher that recorded her. These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in the vast universe. Ah, 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 ah. Get it? A man whose body makes its own alcohol has been cleared of drunk driving. This story's out of... Belgium, a Belgian man has been acquitted of drunk driving because he suffers from a condition called auto brewery syndrome. This is an extremely rare condition whereby the body produces its own alcohol. Wow. This guy isn't at the party. He is the party. I mean, his body makes its own alcohol. Unbelievable, man. Some guys have all the luck. My body only produces its own body fat, you know? This guy's got this condition. Let's figure figure out how it affects his driving. Uh, I'd imagine at any moment he could be considered drunk driving. He, his lawyer's name is Hans Geskiri. Hans Geskiri, my lawyer, Hans Geskiri, said that in another unfortunate coincidence, her client worked at a brewery. But three doctors who independently examined him had confirmed he suffered from ABS. Well, he also works at a brewery. (laughs) The coincidence is here. My client doesn't work at the brewery. He is the brewery, your honor. All right, so how it went down was he's pulled over for drunk driving. He says, no, I wasn't driving. But you're coming from a brewery. Yes, but I work at the brewery. All right, but you're not, you haven't had anything to drink? No, I haven't had anything to drink. My body makes alcohol. I'm a walking brewery. And uh, he was arrested for drunk driving, but then the judge uh, acquitted him. The Bruges Police Court acquitted the man. The judge emphasized that the defendant, who was not named... Uh, publicly did not experience symptoms of intoxication. So his blood alcohol level shows intoxication, but he doesn't have symptoms of intoxication, apparently. This guy's got a high tolerance. Can you imagine? If you're constantly making alcohol, man, this guy, just a very high tolerance, I'd imagine. Very, very expensive date. Now, in this story, we have someone named Lisa who's a clinical biologist. She makes a lot of money. Uh, she works with the Belgian hospital, explained that people with the condition ABS, alcohol brewery syndrome, I'm sorry, auto brewery syndrome, what was it? Let me scroll back up. Auto brewery syndrome, ABS, uh, not to be confused with IBS, that's another different syndrome. You can probably, you probably get IBS a lot if you have ABS, especially if your body's making that cheap beer, you know, like Pabst Blue Ribbon. Oh, man. (laughs) I would like my body to make Guinness, please. You probably don't have a choice. Anyways, we have Lisa, the clinical biologist that makes more money than me. She explained, people with the condition ABS produce the same type of alcohol as that found in alcoholic beverages, but that they generally feel less of its effects. People are not born with ABS. They develop it when they already suffer from another intestine-related condition, she says. Patients can present with symptoms consistent with alcoholic intoxication, such as slurred speech, stumbling, loss of motor functions, dizziness, and belching. I mean, I tell you, that would suck to have this condition just to, you know, just spontaneously get drunk when you didn't, when you don't want to be. Like, what if you're in the middle of a job interview, then all of a sudden you you start slurring your words? That's no good. Uh, but on the positive note, this guy probably gets invited to all the vampire parties, yeah, because the his blood alcohol content is just ripe. The hospital staff pleads with bite victims to please stop bringing the snakes into the emergency room. But what if the snake's still attached to you? I mean, you got to bring it in then, right? Uh, The article begins by saying snake bite victims are endangering some medical staff lately by bringing the reptiles with them to the hospital, according to the doctors. In Queensland's Wide Bay region, this is in Australia, 
doctors have seemed to come face to face with some of the world's most venomous snakes captured by patients, believing it'll help with identification and treatment of their snake bite. You'd imagine in Australia there's a lot of cases of this because there's a lot of uh, venomous snakes in Australia and other reptiles, I'd imagine, more so than any other country. I believe, I believe, a little crazy down under, all sorts of venomous snakes and reptiles and spiders. I tell you, I didn't like those spiders bigger than your face. Uh, the article says in one case earlier this month, emergency staff at the Bundaberg Hospital, four hours north of Brisbane, were handed a plastic food container with a small eastern brown snake inside peering back at them. There's a picture of it here with the snake inside. So whoever was bit actually grabbed the snake afterward. Uh, tough to do once you've been bitten by a snake and the venom starting to roll through your blood. You're starting to feel a little dizzy. And obviously numb. And then you, at that point, you're like, now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the snake that just bit me. I don't know how. I mean, I, I would be hard pressed to catch a snake without feeling the effects of venom running through my body. Never mind. I don't know. It seems crazy to me. The incident here with this snake in the box has prompted the hospital's director of emergency medicine, Adam Michael, to warn patients to just leave the snakes alone. Michael says, we honestly don't want people interacting with snakes any more than they already have. Any attempts to either get close to a snake, to catch or kill, or to photograph a snake just puts people at risk. Well, listen, I mean, I, well, you can take a, a photo of it. That's not that risky. You just, just don't get up close to it and take a selfie with the damn thing, you know, then you'll get bit a second time. Because you're getting bit. Oh, no, hold on. I'm going to get a selfie with it before we get out of here. The doctor says the eastern brown snake that was brought in earlier this month was not very well secured and was wriggling around trying to get out of the box. Yeah, you shouldn't. That's endangering the staff at that point, bringing in, in some unsecured box. Michael says the staff got a fright and the serious consequence of that is it delays people's time for treatment. We want people to be able to get seen and assessed quickly and having a live snake in the department slows up that process. Um, I think I mispronounced department. 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 I think it's department, like in Boston. There's a lot of similarities between the Boston accent and the Australian accent. Uh, snake bites in Australia are considered rare. Really? I find that hard to believe. In Australia? I mean, come on. Snake bites in Manhattan? Pretty rare. Australia? Mm, probably common. It says in March, 47-year-old... Jeremy Brooks died after being bitten multiple times by a suspected eastern brown snake in Townsville. There are about 3,000 suspected snake bites across Australia each year, but only 100 to 200 cases require anti-venom. According to clinical toxicology researcher at the University of Newcastle, his name is Jeff. Uh, Jeff's a doctor, and he says... It's pretty dangerous to bring snakes to the hospital because no one at the hospital will be even able to identify it. If the snake gets out in an emergency department, that becomes a huge disaster. Uh, the doctor says medical staff does not need to see a snake to know how to treat their patients from snake bite. Here's a quote from the doctor. We can determine if you need anti-venom, and if so, what anti-venom you need based on clinical signs, blood tests, and also the snake venom detection kits that we keep here at the hospital. <laughs> they got a snake venom detection kit. We're actually not even trained to identify the snakes, so it's not even helpful. <laughs> we can't, they can't even identify the snake. You're bringing it in. <laughs> this is the one that got me, this one. <laughs> Are you sure that's the one that got you? <laughs> Pretty sure it's still attached to my face. I like to picture like a guy sitting in the ER holding on to the head, like gripping tightly the head of a rattlesnake, <laughs> waiting to be seen by the emergency room doctors. Just occasionally the rattle. <laughs> All right, you're next, sir, and your snake. Come on in. <laughs> now... I know I, I did some research for this article because I was curious why they don't need to have the snake identified because I was always told to bring in what whatever bit you, whether it was a bug or a snake, so that they could identify it. But apparently they can't even identify it. So uh, it's in the U.S. all but one snake, the coral snake, 
the treatment for all of the snakes is just one treatment. So it, that's why you don't need to bring in the snake. They give you something called Crofab. It says here a single vial costs five to ten thousand dollars, and one of your treatments in one of your treatments you will use between ten and twenty vials. This is for a single moderate venomous bite. So this is not including other medical bills. So right there, you're you're in you're in like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars or more. So if you can avoid getting bit by a venomous snake, I would I would advise it in the U.S. You know, for insurance and medical bill purposes, of course. If you, if you do happen to get bit by a snake, uh, the doctor here urges that uh, you shouldn't panic, uh, but call for help and uh, obviously don't catch the snake. The doctor says it's really important not to wash the, the bite site either. Oh, don't wash the bite site. I would have thought you should wash it off. He says, instead, what we want people to do is apply a firm pressure immobilization bandage, start, start, starting at the bite site and covering the entire limb. Then staying calm and still will minimize the risk of any venom traveling throughout your body. Yeah, you don't want to do any dancing after you get the venom bite. That'll just push that venom right up to your brain. Try to stay calm. I know it's not easy when you've been bitten by a pit viper, you know. If you're in the U.S., you know, I don't know, get, find someone to suck out the venom. That way you can cut down on the amount of uh, crofab vials that you'll need when you get there because that'll put you in major debt. And then you'll be homeless and then you'll be living in a tent and they'll be like, what happened to you? How did you end up on the streets? And you'll just be like, it was a snake bite. I went on a hike, and here I am. A school principal was caught getting a facial done on campus, bites the teacher who recorded her. In an unusual turn of events, a principal of a government school in Uttar Pradesh, India, found herself in a bit of a controversy after being caught during a beauty treatment session instead of uh, teaching the students. So she was taking a little break for herself, you know. It's called some me time, some self-care, you know, getting a facial. She's supposed to be doing her job, but, you know, sometimes you need to get a facial, guys. You can't wait. You got hey, your midday facial. Life is hard, and facials calm you down. According to the report, we have Sangeeta Singh, the headmistress of a primary school in Unano, Una, uh, now, Sangeeta was reportedly undergoing a facial treatment during school hours at the school. The incident took place in the cooking area. <laughs> well, come on, Sangeeta, use a little common sense. If you're going to get a facial at school, don't do it in the kitchen. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is here, guys. I'm just getting a facial right next to where they're preparing the food. How could this be against <laughs> protocol? Man, like, I don't know, find an empty classroom to get a facial in. Do it in your car. I, I don't know. Now, there's a teacher at the school named Anam Khan who saw Sangeeta receiving the facial uh, and recorded the scene. In the now viral video, Khan confronts Singh, who hastily rises from her chair and starts chasing Khan. However, the situation escalated when Singh allegedly bites Khan's hand, causing it to bleed. She bites her right on video. Following the altercation, the matter was brought to the attention of the block education officer, prompting an investigation into the incident. And the police also registered a case against Sangeeta after Khan underwent a medical examination to document her injuries during the event. All right, well, I hope she was taken to a hospital to assess the damages to make sure she's going to be okay. In Florida, a teacher bite might give you rabies, so I don't know about India. According to the media, a case has been filed against the headmistress with the uh, Bigapore police on the basis of the complaint by the teacher, and they've ordered an investigation. And, you know, well, some human beings just haven't evolved. They're still biting people. So this is probably how she got the position as the principal at the school. It's just <laughs> she was biting people's ass, man. They're afraid of her. She probably lose her job because of this, I'd imagine. A getting a facial at school, which really, you know, I've never heard of someone getting a facial at their job uh, or anywhere but the place where they do facials, the spa or the the esthetician center, whatever you call that. Um, 
I heard they do something called a back facial. Is that weird? Back facials. You've heard of that? What's that all about? Is that if you get like ac- acne on your back? Like back knee? And you go get a back facial? Do they do a butt facial? It's weird to call it a facial when it's not on the face. So the back facial is strange. But if we're going to extrapolate that out to other body parts, I guess you just add facial to everything. So butt facial, a, a heel facial, foot facial. So, Anyways, this story is going off the rails as I usually do. Well, I mean, this woman should work with dogs, though, because she's, she behaves like a dog. So she can maybe get a job working with dogs after this. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a better idea for her? (laughs) Sangeeta, stay tuned. We have some advice for you. Yay! Hey, how are you? Did you enjoy my little beatbox? I thought I would open the outro. Open the outro? Oh, man. I just blew my own mind. (laughs) I opened the outro, bro. You understand how crazy that is? That's like jumbo shrimp. What do they call that? Onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia? No. What what do they call that? I forget. There's a word for that. Jumbo shrimp. Anyways, let's give some love, guys. Let's give some love. First of all, I love you. I love you for spending some time with the Weird AF News podcast. Please uh, tell a friend about it, someone that you think might get something out of this. People are depressed, man. Mental anguish is part of reality, more so than it's ever been. I think people are more depressed than they were in the Black Plague. That was a pretty depressing time. There's definitely more people than there. So definitely more people are depressed than, I don't know about what a percentage would be. But if the black plague's going around, you, you, you know, you, you don't even have time to be depressed. Depression that comes from like reflection, like you need time to process things in order to be depressed about them. But if everybody's just dying around you, you don't even have time to process things. You just think like the world is ending right now. It's survival mode. Anyways, I don't know how I got on this tangent about the black plague. That's pretty depressing. Jonesy, can you keep it upbeat on the Weird AF News podcast, please? Guys, it's hard. <laughs> The world's crazy. I'm trying to stay positive, but it's not easy. You know what cheers me up, though, is when someone joins the Patreon, like Buck Williamson. Buck, Buck's an OG. Buck Williamson, OG, just joined the Patreon. Me and Buck have had a lot of back and forth on Instagram uh, for a couple years now, and uh, Buck sends me quite a few articles, which is really helpful, and... Buck is living in Las Vegas, so at some point I'm going to be meeting Buck. Uh, it'll be on my next Vegas trip, whenever that is. I got to plan it out. You know, I'm in the middle of a long trip now, so it's not like when when I get back, my I'll be out of money. So I mean, going to Vegas might have to wait a little bit. Um, going anywhere after this might have to wait, might have to wait a bit. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm in some countries where it's pretty cheap to to eat. You know, like your basic necessities are pretty affordable. Uh, and uh, I posted on my Instagram the things that I've eaten and sometimes I'll put the price next to it and it's just like, it's unbelievable, man. It's like, get a whole plate of chicken and rice and veggies, like, you know, it's like a dollar ninety or something. It's like amazing. Anyways, Buck, shout out to Buck. Big credit for Buck joining the Patreon, showing some real support. If you guys want to be cool like Buck and sh- support the show, go to patreon.com slash weird AF news. That's the, what you can do. You can also download the Patreon app on your phone and do a search for weird AF news or go to weirdafnews.com, the official website of weird AF news and just click on the Patreon banner. That's pretty easy. Adjacent to the Patreon banner is a cup of coffee. It says, buy me a coffee. You can buy Jonesy a coffee instead of joining the Patreon. If you're, if you're just like, if you have a hard time with commitment, you know, because the Patreon's like buying me one coffee a month, something like that. So if you just want to buy me a, a few cups and just keep it at that, because maybe you're like, hey, maybe like, you know, three months from now, you're like, I'm not feeling Jonesy anymore. I don't want to be supportive at that point. So I get it. I get it. Just you could buy me a one off. Buy me a coffee on the website, weirdafnews.com. Uh, call the show if you feel like it's 646-450-2012. And then my email, as always, funnyjones at gmail.com. Send me an article. Send me an introduction. Say hello. Send me critique, suggestions, advice. Tell me you hate me. Whatever. 
drop me a line. I like to hear from people. It's fun that way. All right. Good luck with your life, bro.